the national parks of North America, havens of the mountain spirits, of desert mysteries, living museums of nature's most profound beauty and starkest contrasts. The National Park is an American invention, an expression of the American soul. The parks are our treasures, our history, our pride, and our solace. In the immensity of their diversity, they provide us with the fullest sense of who we are. It is difficult to imagine a time when these treasures were in danger of being overrun by human progress. Then, with the founding of the National Park Service in 1872, we ensured that our footprint on these singular lands would be a small one. Men may bend, crumble, and fade away when subject to the undying power of time, weather, and light but we may taste eternity, if for only a moment, as we explore our timeless national parks. America's national parklands stand alone in the world. They are the crown jewels in the North American landscape. These places tell us the chronicle of time and help us to understand the Earth's story. By setting aside pieces of America's original wild land, we have protected our birthright for ourselves and given an enormous gift to the world. Our national parks represent us to the world with honor. offers us the perpetuity of wildness. It offers us hope and memory. It offers us the earth as it was, and so long as its protection remains intact, as it will be.
rising to heights of 13,000 feet in dramatic vertical displacement are temples of great wisdom and strength. Breaking through clouds, battling the high weather, the mountains are symbols of our own quest to rise and stand strong. At Teton, sky and earth are united in more than 100 alpine lakes, bearing the reflection of bold granite peaks, clouds, and trees, declaring the unity of all nature's elements. In knowing this glorious land, and in preserving it, we also preserve the spirit within all of us. In the American Southwest, there is a slowness and a distance to things, a patience, an endurance. There is time for snow. There is time for the etching of great canyons. plateau of the southwestern United States is the oldest landmass in the puzzle that makes up the American continent. This truly unique landscape is home to 15 of our most spectacular national parks. There is barely a hint of this land's storied past, where millions of years ago it was an ocean floor. These vast petrified layers of sediment are testimony to the eons of pressure and shifting that were exerted by a turbulent ocean above. Just as the needles of a cactus concealed the soft, delicate plant hidden within, so too does the rough external appearance of the desert conceal a highly sensitive and fragile ecology. All this is measured by the delicate beauty of this rocky land, 
which has endured a long battle with the forces of weather. In the desert, the struggle to survive is what brings us closer to the intangible mystery of nature. growth forests, lush meadows, and pristine waters of the Pacific Northwest offer us a palette of emerald beauty. A sleeping volcano encased in snow and glacial ice, Mount Rainier is the famous landmark of the Cascade Range and dominates the skyline. This portion of the Cascade Mountains owes its beauty to the rains that wash off from the Pacific Ocean. But rather than dilute color, these waters bring it to life. Across the broad spectrum of nature's palette of forms, water occupies its own sacred position. It is the source of life and the shaper of landscapes. In contemplating water, we are reminded of the essential lesson of nature, that everything is connected. This lesson of beauty and harmony was not lost on our early conservationists, Freeman Tilden, the poet and advocate for our national park system, once wrote, the early philosophers looked at the world about them and decided that there were four elements, fire, air, water, and earth. But as they grew a little wiser, they perceived that there must be something else. These tangible elements did not comprise a principle. They merely revealed that somewhere else, if they could not find it, there was a soul of things, a fifth essence, pure, eternal, and inclusive. Denali. The word means the high one and is the name the local Athabascan people ascribe to Mount McKinley. With its stunning mass reaching over 20,000 feet, it is the rooftop of North America.
Denali stands at the apex of the 600-mile-long Alaskan Range. These mountains, with their surrounding glaciers and lowlands, make up North America's largest national park, an area totaling more than 6 million acres. Within this vast territory, human influence is rendered meaningless as the patterns of nature's artistry canvas the landscape. From the low riverbeds that reveal swirls of earthen clay, wilderness of miniature plant life turns into a technicolor carpet in the fall. And into deep centuries-old forests, Denali echoes the rugged independence of a perpetual frontier. The sands of the Pacific seashore along the Olympic Peninsula glimmer like molten gold, as if to provide us with a hint of all the treasures that lie inland. The 
the place where ocean meets land is not to be overlooked when we explore our protected national treasures. Three distinct ecosystems coexist in this park, from the Pacific shoreline to high subalpine meadows displaying spacious wildflower spreads. that receives more than 12 feet of rain per year offers us, in exchange, a rare temperate rainforest with tall trees, a sweeping canopy, and a fine retreat. of Olympic National Park is wilderness. Besides a variety of forests, meadows, and highlands, the wilderness encompasses a 60-mile long Pacific coastline. On the right day, we can return to the Pacific coast as the tides recede across the sands, chasing the sunset westward, treading along the land-bound edges of our national parks. Gateways to nature, to discovery, to solitude, and to celebrate the beauty and infinite variety of our land. That is how Parks Canada defines the country's national parks.
What is it that impels us to respect the freedom and majesty of the national parks? Is it something peculiar only to Americans? That cannot be. For soon after Yellowstone was created, the Canadian government created their first national park, Banff, nestled in the heart of the magnificent Canadian Rockies. Before winter would arrive, the Northern Rockies' earliest human inhabitants descended into the prairies and valleys, escaping the approaching harsh winds and unforgiving cold. Days passed. The seasons turned. The waters went from warm to cold, as did the world they reflected on their surface. And thus, the mountains were abandoned for six months or more, left under a cover of snow and ice, barren. What is it that the mountains know in their solitude? It is perhaps something we can never understand. Much as the earliest tribes who came here, we too know that these northern Rockies promise only a first taste things to come. They are a gateway, an introduction to our diverse continent, a warning and a welcome from the spirit of the mountains. In contrast to the snow-capped Rockies, we find the dry desolation of the desert lands. The lowlands of the Death Valley Desert are rugged, forbidding, and almost unimaginably hot and dry. Lying in the rain shadow of the massive Sierra Nevada mountains, it receives less than two inches of rain a year, with temperatures reaching 120 degrees in the summer. Elevations range from 280 feet below sea level, the lowest point in the United States, 
to 11,000 feet in the distant Panamint Mountains, giving this land a wide variety of ecosystems. In 1903, writer Mary Austin called Death Valley the loneliest land that ever came out of God's hands. The artful balance of life and struggle to survive is readily evident here in the desert. The will to survive in this harshest of environments teaches us much about the intangible mysteries of nature.